Elon Musk adding another title to his resume. Twitter director, the news helping shares of the social media network close back above the $50 mark for the first time since last November. Our next guest says Musk could bring new life to a company that has lagged behind its competitors. Let's bring in Sahil Bloom, SRB Ventures managing partner. Sahil, great to have you with us. Um, this is a guy with tremendous reach. This is a guy also when, when he was in the throes of, of production hell for his car, set up tents in the parking lot in order to get the stuff done. So what can we expect here? Because I feel like we should be expecting a lot in a short amount of time. Yeah, the fact of the matter with Elon Musk is that he moves fast. Uh, you, know, you guys were on here yesterday and I was watching and we were talking about whether he was going to get more active and be involved. And now here we are a day later and he's on the board. And we had all the tweet storms going out today and, you know, the edit button, everything that he's doing. The guy just moves, love him or hate him. And I think it means a lot for Twitter. When you think about the stock and you look at what they've done over the last 10 years, the product fundamentally has not changed over a long period of time. And that's a huge issue for them. They haven't innovated and they haven't been able to ship new features to customers. And the people on the platform are languishing. Yeah, Sahil, I think that's a really good point. And we were talking about it again last night. We we're just saying that, you know, if you put a couple product fixes in, that maybe keeps some of the people that are power users very happy, but it doesn't grow that audience. And that audience really hasn't grown much. They have 330 million monthly active users, and it's never really going to get to a billion. So how do you, like, you know, I don't think the ex-CTO as new CEO can fix those sorts of things. And I don't really think Elon as a passive investor, even as a board member, can fix that. What are some of the things that grow the audience? Yeah, so I'm going to disagree with you a little bit here, Dan. And, and I think one of the things, when you think about new product features rolling out, this all comes down to people being able to create more engaging, more immersive content on the platform. When you're able to do that, that draws in new audience. That's how you grow the platform. It's because people are able to create more. They're able to create more communities, more engaging content. And these new product features, while one might not do it, an edit button might not be the thing that does it, an edit button plus longer form content by a review plus Twitter communities plus Twitter spaces, if they're able to keep innovating around these new things, that allows creators like myself to be able to go and create that engaging content that draws in new users. So that would be the bull case if, if it were up to me. By the way, we were saying yesterday Elon Musk filed a 13G. He's just converted that to a 13D. So we filed the activist filing with the SEC now. So it's official that he is now an activist investor in Twitter. Uh, Karen's combing mm -hmm. through the 13D. She alerted this to me um, just a few minutes ago. Sal, in terms of um, what Elon could, I mean, thinking about what Elon likes, you know, an open forum, uh, more diverse views, uh, crypto, NFTs, will these things help Twitter monetize or at least keep the, the, the users sticky to the platform? I think you're going to see a lot more testing from them, and they're going to try new things. They're going to test new stuff, uh, and it's going to be a more interesting time. It sort of turns Twitter into a little bit of a meme stock, right? You saw the options activity yesterday. I know Guy was commenting on that. Uh, it, it turns Twitter into a much more exciting and probably much more volatile stock. And from a business perspective, I actually think it creates a little bit of a recruiting edge for them that hasn't existed previously, that no one's really talking about. But the top engineers in Silicon Valley were not looking to go join Twitter. It was always a boring place to work because they weren't shipping product. Now, all of a sudden, you have Elon Musk involved. Maybe they're going to be moving more quickly. Maybe some of those 10x engineers that everyone talks about are going to start moving to Twitter. That is an excellent point. Sahil, always great to get your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you so much for having Sahil me. Sahil Bloom. Um, it's no telling what talent can do for a company like Twitter guy. And Sahil just mentioned that in terms of, uh, you know, recruiting edge. No question about it. And if you're not following Sahil on uh, Twitter, you're doing Twitter wrong. You should absolutely follow him. His tweet threads have become must read. But I'll say this, you know, in terms of trading the stock, which is what we're typically tasked to do, we thought he could get to 55, got to 54 and change today, close enough for government work, as they say, on, again, over 200 million shares. Now the question is, is that enough in the short term? I think it is. And I think you actually see a back and fill maybe mid to high 40s, you know, 45, 46 or so, then you buy it again. This is going to be a great stock to trade over the next couple of months, without question. So Elon's 13D, it shows his purchases the last 60 days. He started buying at the end of January. The end of January. Yeah, so the stock was, I think, in the high 30s Goodbye. then, 36. Um, and then it allows him to do, and when you file a 13D, you have to say what your intentions are. 
unlike a G. So right. we didn't know that yesterday, but now we know that he's joined the board. He may buy in the future. He may sell in the future. He may need liquidity. He may do whatever he wants to do because he's Elon, but you can do that in a filing. The thing that's sort of interesting to me, the standstill allows for him, for the board to say you can't buy any more stock above 14.9% for as long as you're on the board and 90 days after you are on the board. That mm. still holds. So who knows? Maybe he'll get bored. I don't know. And do something else. But I do think in the meantime, he's clearly going to shake things up. I, I don't know. What's it worth? I have no idea. Right. All right. Um, let's move on because we got uh, some news here. Frontier Airlines is responding to Jeff Blue's competing offer for Spirit. Let's get back to Phil with the latest developments. Phil? Hey, Melissa, the statement from Frontier, which just came out, is a very clear rebuke of what uh, JetBlue is proposing. In fact, the company takes JetBlue's proposal to the task saying, oh, no, it is not superior to our offer, saying, unlike the compelling Spirit Frontier combination, an acquisition of Spirit by JetBlue, a high fare carrier would lead to more expensive travel for consumers. In particular, the significant East Coast overlap between JetBlue and Spirit would reduce competition and limit options for consumers. It is surprising that JetBlue would consider such a merger at this time, given that the Department of Justice is currently suing to block their pending alliance with American Airlines. Frontier is not backing down. I think this is a clear indication, Melissa, that Frontier, while they're not raising their bid, they're not changing anything, they've already got a merger in place with Spirit, they intend to make sure that Spirit shareholders and the Spirit board is aware that they want this merger to go through. Now, do they have to amend the terms now that JetBlue has come in with an offer that JetBlue says is 37% to a premium over the Frontier merger agreement? We'll wait and see. But clearly, Frontier wants to be engaged in this, uh, and they're not going to go quietly. How do we think about, um, about the, the notion that prices will go up for consumers, Phil? I mean, if there are a number of slots, X number of slots in Florida, and the Department right. of Justice says in order to merge, you've got to give up Y number of slots, don't those slots just go to somebody else? Yep. And so, in theory, the, the flights are the same, the number of flights? Well, the number of flights, yes, you are correct. In fact, by the way, we have reached out to a couple of uh, data crunching organizations, Sirium being one of them, uh, and we've asked them, tell us how many flights the different carriers have into Florida. Look, if JetBlue and Spirit are going to have 170 daily flights, how does that compare with Southwest, Delta, mm -hmm. American, United? Is it dramatically more? I don't know at this point. Right. But 170 daily flights is going to get the attention of regulators. Now, whether or not they can say, okay, go ahead. That remains to be seen. But that's certainly going to be a sticking point. 